not really that, I'm not that horribly interested in why people commit crimes, because I think that uh, it doesn't take a whole lot of time to figure out some of the motivation and all that. And when you've seen enough of it, it is not that much that's new under the sun, even though it's always horrifying every time it happens. I'm far more interested in the people who solve these problems. What is it like to be a detective? What is it really like? What is it like to be a forensic pathologist? What is it like to be an archeologist or a forensic scientist? Or be someone like Sir Alec Jeffries who discovers the DNA fingerprinting. In other words, brings DNA into the identity um, the identification that can help us solve crimes like he did right here at Leicester. So that is what gets, that's what chimes my bell, so to speak. It's not so much that I'm fascinated by bad people. In fact, I'm far more fascinated by good ones. And I think the Scarpetta series is a celebration of the, of the good people uh, who go get those bad ones. Well, I mean, Alec Jeffries is, is the god of forensic science as far as I'm concerned. He basically, if you could say somebody in, invented, he didn't invent DNA, but he came up with the whole notion of doing, using DNA to, to identify individuals and then had the brilliance to see, think, geez, that could apply to crime. My career indirectly got launched because of what he did, because DNA is the main character in that book when no one else was writing about it. That came out in 1990. So, I have a very personal history that has to do with him, even though I've never met him. And DNA was one of the first things I heard about. When I went to see that medical examiner's office in Virginia, my first time ever that I'd stepped foot in a morgue, and this, this medical examiner said, well, there's, there's two things that they're talking about now. One is using lasers, and I went, ooh, that sounds cool. And the other is this thing called DNA, which may help in identification. And I said, I want to learn about these things. That was in 1984 when I had that conversation. I don't know exactly what year um, that he, but it was around that time. And so, and that was when I started my research. So I think I owe a, a debt of gratitude to Leicester University, and I didn't even know it at the time. I think DNA, which is gonna continue to change, you know, they, they get some, the technologies change all the times, as, as you guys know more than, better than anybody, because you're sort of the mecca of it, as far as I'm concerned. So it's always gonna be fun to keep an eye on that, because one of the things that goes with that is the more, the, the smaller the sample that you can detect, like they're doing a low copy number DNA and, you know, analysis and so forth, then you also have the problems that come with that, which is contamination and how do you know if you literally could take an air sample and say that I had just walked through the room or I, at some point, what does that mean when you get to that level of, of, of being specific? So the technologies with DNA are gonna change for lots of reasons we can't even imagine yet in terms of, of what we do with it and how we use it and what we have to ward against. The other thing is imaging. You know, any t imaging, particularly using spectroscopy and types of imaging, you know, where it's non-destructive to a sample. That is incredibly important in forensics because so often you can't afford to destroy a sample during the analysis. If you're using light sources um, uh, in, in all types of imaging, including even MRIs and CTs with the CT scans with bodies when appropriate, I think everything's moving more that way to non-destructive analysis. If I could swap being a successful writer, being who I am for any one thing, um, absolutely doing anything that, that makes the world a better place than I found it. In my own way, I try to do that even as just a lowly writer who's not a Nobel Prize winning scientist, which I'll never be. I wish I could be, but I didn't even manage chemistry when I was in college. I ran for the hills, so that's not my, in my cards, but I would want to, and, I'm not, and maybe I'll still get to do this. I want to do anything that makes our planet better that adds to humanity to, to, to you know, my, my mantra was Scarpetta's mantra. It's the life in front of you. You can't save everything, but you take care of what's in front of you, whether it's that dead body at that crime scene or the, the relative that you're talking to or the archeologist who's looking at the bones of somebody who died hundreds of years ago. Well, that, those bones mattered to that guy at one time. We should still care about it. We should always care about the life in front of us, no matter how long it's been gone.